Good evening. My name is Pastor Chad Mills, and I am the pastor of Apostolic Tabernacle of the Felicianas. I want to thank you for joining us for another nightly family devotions that we are trying to do on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. Again, it is just another way that we can connect uh, the body, the, the people of Christ can, can connect one with another during this time as we are working our way through this virus pandemic. Also, please always remember to Wednesday night at 7.30 and uh, on Sundays, normally at 1.30, but this coming Sunday it will be at 10.30 a.m. due to Easter. We are having live online services that we would like for you to join in and be a part of also. I want to thank those that joined in last night as Brother Sean Latell done an amazing job teaching from the word of the Lord about the question of salvation. And so greatly he explained uh, and, and just completely broke it down, rightly dividing the word of the Lord and the truth, showing us that there is a right way to be saved and, there, and God gave us a pattern for us to do it and we should obey that. And so, so thankful for what God done last night to, presence of God was so strong in that place. I want to open, before I get started uh, with our, our lesson today, I want to open this up with prayer. God, we thank you for what you've been doing, God. We thank you for your hand of protection upon each and every individual. We thank you for those that's been affected, Lord, by these virus, Lord, that, that your healing virtue has been working in their lives, oh God. Uh, Lord Jesus, Lord, uh, though, Lord, it is at uncertain times, we serve a certain God, Lord. I, I pray right now that you would continue to touch these individuals, God. Let healing virtue flow in their lives. Uh, God, I put, a, I put your hand of protection around them, Lord. Angels around them. God, hedges of protection around them. Get, Lord, touch their bodies, their souls, their minds, their spirit, God. I pray, Lord, that you'd be a comfort to them during these times. I pray you'd be, Lord, a, a comfort and a peace to their family members, God. Lord, I pray, God, for every individual, Lord, every law enforcement officer, Lord, every health care worker, God, put a hedge of protection around them, watch over them, and keep them, and guide them, and direct them. I pray right now, God, for our national leaders, God, our president, God, our senators and congressmen and women, God. I pray, God, for our state officials, our governor, God, and, and all those, in, Lord, in state offices. I pray, God, for our local officials, God, Lord, that you, Lord, keep your hand upon them. Give them all wisdom and knowledge that they, if we all try to navigate through this, I pray for every pastor, God, I, and Lord, let them use wisdom and knowledge as we navigate through these uncertain times, but we still serve a very certain God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Again, we've been talking on Monday. We begin a series, our, uh, kind of a, a five-part devotional series on things that the angels desire to look into. And so tonight, uh, we're going to be talking about part three. So let's look at our key verse that we've been using for every night. 1 Peter 1 and 11 through 12. Search in what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy, with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. And that last part is what I really want us to focus in on. Which things the angels desire to look into. Monday night we talked about uh, we've seen that the angels looking into the cradle in the hay when the Lord manifested himself in flesh and he came and he dwelt with man and he done that uh, through the virgin birth, uh, laying there a cradle in the hay. And then we begin to talk, uh, Tuesday night rather, we talked about the conflict in the wilderness and how the angels looked upon him, but the Lord was fighting it all by himself as he began to be tempted by Satan. But then after that temptation, after them it was over with, of course we know the Lord won that, that battle that the angels came and ministered unto him. Now 
we see them desire to look into part three, and that will be the seclusion in Gethsemane. The seclusion in Gethsemane. Just outside of Jerusalem, on the lower slopes of Mount Olive, and just across the Kidron Brook, was an enclosed garden. It was a place of ancient trees and their large twisted trunks and spreading branches that would be laden with fruit and foliage and it formed a natural place of seclusion and a, a retreat from the daily pressures of life. And if, if you could think some of the trees uh, uh, that you can see across the state of Louisiana, um, think about some of the trees if you ever been on the campus of LSU there and I worked for a period of time there that you'll see these big old roots and they're just going all all over the place and, and the low hanging branches and all of this it would kind of remind you of that in, in a way except these were trees that were uh, trees excuse me that were bearing fruit I've been to been blessed to go to Israel and Jerusalem before and I, that strongly reminded me of some of the things that you actually see here in Louisiana and so Jesus loved to go there. He, he could withdraw into its shadows. It was a place that he, it was a secluded place. It, and uh, he, he would go there and he would talk to his father. It was called Gethsemane, which means the oil press. It was the last place that the Lord sought out before he died. He came there to watch and weep and to pray. First, the Bible lets us know that he withdrew a stone's cast, a stone throw away, from his three closest friends. Luke 22 and 41 says, And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and he kneeled down and he prayed. That phrase, a stone's cast, has a special meaning to it. The Jews executed their criminals by stoning them many times. So a stone's cast refers to the distance of death. For Jesus, death was only a stone's cast away. I've said it many times before. Calvary was very bad. He died on an old rugged tree. We know all about that. We can never even really explain the, the details of how bad that it was. But Jesus won the battle in Gethsemane. He, he won the fight. He, he conquered his flesh, not on a old rugged tree, but he conquered it at that very point where he said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Because what he was saying is, my flesh does not want to do this. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. But at that very point, those three different times he come back, you know, that he could continue with those hours of prayer, he was conquering that flesh. And that's when he said, you know, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. I don't want to drink from this bitter cup. But nevertheless, thy will be done. Okay? And so, Mark, doubtless, conveying Peter's word, says that in Mark 14 and 33, and he Take it with him, Peter, James, and John, and he began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. The word that Mark uses here in his gospel when he states that Christ began to be very heavy means deeply weighed down or depressed. Think of it. Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh, the all-conquering Christ, who is always in control of every circumstance, we now find him depressed. In the upper room, just a short time before, Jesus had sung the Hebrew hallelujah hymn. Now he groans, deeply weighed down by the very thoughts of our sins. Then too, Mark tells us in Mark 14 and 33, he told us, and he taken with him Peter and James and John, he began to be sore amazed. He was greatly amazed, or he was greatly astonished. The expression occurs only in Mark's gospel, but he uses it three different times within the, the book of Mark. He used the word to describe the people at the foot of the Mount of Transfiguration, 
when the Lord arrived in their midst, all aglow from his contact, contact with heaven. He uses the word again in connection with the appearance of the angel at the empty tomb of Christ. The word describes the reaction of the women. They were affrighted or they were thrown into terror. But now Mark uses the word to describe the Lord's grief in the garden. On both of the other occasion of the glow of the glory that still clung to him as he came down from the Mount, Mount Transfiguration and of the shining one uh, who guarded the tomb, the word is associated with another world. The same is true here. As he gazed into the dark and that dreadful cup that was being presented for him to drink, Jesus Christ is overwhelmed by the word of evil, excuse me, the world of evil that he must now embrace. The angels desire to look into all of this, for this is beyond their understanding. Their beloved, their Lord, so identified with all of the horror, all of the wickedness, all of our other sin, as to actually be made, the Bible says, to be made sin for us. It was he that knew no sin. He became sin for us. And so it was as he came close to death there in the garden of Gethsemane at the thought of what laid before him, laid ahead, uh, angels came to strengthen him. He must not die there. Not there in a garden, but on a skull-shaped hill at a place called Calvary. So the angels, the Bible lets us know they came. They came and they ministered to him. And then sadly, they went back home. And the heavenly host, I could see them if we could use our thoughts and imagination. As the heavenly host awaits their return, these angels that were ministered, as, as they return back, and the heavenly hosts gather around again. You say that he was alone? Was there not a single one of Adam's race to wipe his brow, to grip his hand during this time? And I can see those ministering angels as they say, we saw three men not far off. Uh, we, we, they, they were his friends. Uh, one was named Peter. One was named James. One was named John. He called for them more than one time. He called for them and said, could you not watch with me? Could you not pray with me just one hour? But both times they were sound asleep. So Peter, James, and John missed the opportunity of a lifetime to minister to him, the Lord Jesus Christ, in his time of need. How often one wonders. In closing here, have we, have I, have you missed some similar occasion to win the high recognition and eternal reward of not just him ministering to us, but us ministering to him? See, we're always looking for what God can do for us. But what can we do for God? Think about it. You draw nigh unto him, and he'll draw nigh unto thee. We, we can do our part. Because as much as you feel like you need the Lord, the Lord needs you. You were created to worship him. You were created to praise him. You were created to, to be that one that he can have relationship with. That void that is always in every man and woman's life that can only be fulfilled, not in alcohol, not in drugs, not in pornography, not in any of the vices and the addictions of this world, but it can only be fulfilled by Jesus Christ. Guess what? You are the only one that can fulfill the void that is in his life. Yes, angels were there to minister to him that day. But it was only because Peter, John, James was not doing their job. 
And no angel can do what you was created to do. You were created. You said, Brother Mills, I believe the angels can do a better job than what I can do. Then, friend, he wouldn't meet us in heaven. The angels are continually 24-7 saying, Hosanna to the highest. They're, they're worshiping him. They're praising him. But it is only a temporary void till we get there and spend eternity with him. I want to thank you again for joining us for another great uh, time in the Holy Ghost as we had another devotion where we connected one with another. Join us again tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. And make sure you spend today some time, if you have not already, in prayer with your family as we bond together in spirit and in truth with the Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless your home, your family, and God bless America.